Okay, I'm speaking in honor of Black History Month. I always hear this question debated. It's almost as dangerous as discussing religion and politics with your friends. My grandmother tells me to never discuss religion or politics with your friends, especially if you have hopes of keeping that friend. Let's take a trip to the dining hall to ask this question. Look at the juice dispenser. Here's the question. Orange juice or apple juice? The problem with this deliberation is that it is restrictive. Somewhere in there, a lemonade person is standing there like, uh, I actually prefer lemonade. I'm that lemonade person. But the whole story isn't about what kind of juice I like. This talk is about how I stand in the middle. Well, actually, I've always been in the middle. I'm even the middle child. My mother is Caucasian, and my father is African American. There have always been questions of self-identity floating around my mind. It began with my older sister, whose skin is several shades darker than mine. A series of questions about the differences between the Caucasian side of my family on the one hand and me and my sister on the other. These were memorable topics of conversation. My sister would ask her mother, why am I darker than you? Why is my hair curly? Why don't I have freckles? Why are my eyes brown? My mom would typically reply, you're my mulatto babies. Still, there were questions to as to why we look different from everyone else in the family. But then my brother was born. He wasn't colored. He wasn't like me and my sister. He had shimmering blue eyes and straight light brown hair. He had fair, he had fair easily burnable, easily bruisable skin. It was skin that didn't compare to my sister's and mine. Skin that didn't tan, skin that had freckles sketched across his nose. Between me and my sister, I was stuck in the middle. Around that time, my sister continuously quoted Cheaper by the Dozen by calling me FedEx. It implied that I didn't look like any of my family members. My siblings had my mother's face, my sister had my father's nose, my father's eyes. Somehow, the most I inherited was my mother's hazel eyes. After my mom passed away when I was eight, my African-American heritage was simply ignored by my white grandparents who adopted me and my siblings. I had so many questions about why I was deprived of my father. My sister knew him. She met him a handful of times be before I was born. His abandonment left so many questions. Questions about who I was, what is my culture, who is my culture, where is my culture. This was something my grandparents simply couldn't answer. Their culture consisted of making beef stroganoff and eating crepes coated with brown sugar, and I've only ever been exposed to their culture. The culture of setting up mangers on Christmas and eating strawberry rhubarb crisp. There was never an attempt on my grandparents' part to encourage my expression of the other side of my identity. Instead, it was suppressed. As I'm sitting here writing this speech, I'm questioning if I'm considered black enough to speak about my experience, because I am mixed. With my hazel eyes and lighter toned skin, I'm afraid of being looked at with questioning eyes by people who consider themselves more black than me. On the one hand, I completely understand the judgment. There are stereotypes as to how someone of color is supposed to act, how someone of color is supposed to talk. But the same goes for someone not of color. I don't fall within either stereotypes. I mix. So why does someone else get to define my racial identity? Who gets to define the level of the color of my skin? My grandmother typically attempts to define my identity, labeling me as biracial constantly. My grandmother's statement is fair and correct. My grandmother views my desire to know my African-American culture as idolization of my father, even though I have never spoken of this man in a positive light. But sitting of a sea of blonde-haired, blue-eyed people, I feel judgment creep in on me. I feel separation, and I feel waves of self-doubt. I am lemonade. I almost feel trapped in confusion. Is this the way I talk? Is this the way I dress? Is this where I come from? These questions stay unanswered. These questions still float in the air. Given the way I look to others, I am objectified and then assigned to a group of people without my personal choice. I question where I fit in overall. Sometimes my brother even points out the skin tone of me and my sister. One day he drew a family photo that excluded my sister. 
In it, I had exaggerated hair and I was the only one colored in. Why, I asked. Because you're brown, duh, he replied with a shrug. So where do I fit in? I grew up in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Most people pronounce it Lawrence. To me, that's a name that doesn't amount to the integrity of the city. The integrity stands with the way I felt at home no matter the setting. The integrity lies with the, within the clock tower that changes colors. It lies within the traffic lights in the invisible sidewalks and the vibrations of the cars you can feel through the roads. This integrity lives within the people now, the honesty of its inhabitants. The primary language is Spanish, 75% of the population. The diversity of Hispanics includes Mexicans, Dominicans, Guatemalans, Puerto Ricans, and so many more. The most fascinating aspect to me is the citizens of Lawrence and the way they carried their culture. They carried their passions and their love of music, dancing, food, and 3 a.m. parties. I was envious of their knowledge of their culture. Honestly, I don't even know what part of Africa my ancestors originate from. That information is unknown. But then there's my aunt, the one person who encouraged my black culture. In 2020, I got my hair cornrowed and box braided with ombre blue synthetic hair. It was the first time I had my hair done. She took me to a Haitian woman and I sat in a chair for hours as my hair was pulled and tugged at. I felt black. I could wear my hair down without tangles. I could wrap it in a heavy bun atop my head. I could go outside in the rain without worrying about frizz. Best of all, I could wake up five minutes before Zoom class and look like I was awake for hours without a lion's mane of hair flying into the air. Curly hair is harder to maintain. You can't brush through it with your fingers and it doesn't fall as effortlessly as straight hair. Essentially, your hair determines your confidence. Your hair determines your moods. Your hair makes up who you are. My auntie sat in a store for hours reading the back of shampoo and conditioner bottles to learn what was good for my hair because my grandmother simply didn't put in much effort. My grandmother probably didn't know the right questions to ask, the right products to use, and she didn't try to learn. And yet, I am indebted to my grandparents for adopting me and my siblings, regardless of the lack of effort and ignorance of my African-American heritage. Although, I want to acknowledge the deep love that they have for me and that I have for them. In my Lawrence classrooms in an old brick build school building, I sat at a table in one side of the room, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans spoke in Spanish back and forth. My skin color fit in. Our tones differed from each other, only slightly. I looked like them, but my hazel eyes and lack of speaking Spanish set me apart. I couldn't engage with the stories of their culture, of their habits of eating rice and beans with chicken. I think I ate rice once a month maximum at home. I felt like the darkness of my skin tone was strained and that my eyes grew lighter as the months passed. I was white at school. To cope with this, my older sister rejected our being African American and labeled us as Dominican. To make excuses for the reason our skin color is brown, to better fit into our environment. Fast forward to Brooks. Since I began my freshman year, I have come to this reoccurring theme with my grandmother. Our arguments always center around the topic of my identity. She constantly labels me as biracial. I haven't denied it. I'm not going to ignore the white part of my identity, but I do not idolize or recognize my white heritage when I feel outnumbered by blue eyes in a classroom. When someone asks, is your hair natural? And then reaches out, touching my hair without asking, adding to the image they have already created, the question and the action swirl throughout my mind throughout the day. At home, over Christmas break, I had a meltdown about the suppression of my black history, realizing that I do go to a predominantly white school, unlike my middle school. I bring up that part of my identity that I haven't addressed properly until now. There is no exact image of what it is to be black, but somehow people hold an image they create. It is a social construction. Of course, there are no specific characteristics you can use to categorize someone because of the color of their skin. Instead, it is you as a person who identifies, I am black. As I write this, I am attempting to reject confining labels. Although I need to acknowledge that I am labeling and categorizing people into groups too. Even just referring to the type of juice one prefers. As
As I write this speech, I still wonder, am I black enough? Can I speak about my experiences even though I am mixed? I got this all confused. <laughs> This school allows me to dedicate myself to exploring what it means to be black. I've made this dedication to myself at the beginning of Black History Month. And I would like to honor my own black history. It turns out that I am black enough. Thank you.